All right. First action in a half court setting is drive and kick. So if you've done this a little bit with me already on the court, I talk about it as a circle. So if the ball dribbles right with my right hand, all of my teammates are moving to their right. And we're going to talk about that on the internal, like postman position later on in the course. But for this week, we're all guards. We're all at the three-point line. When the ball drives right into the paint, all the guards move to their right outside the three. We are creating space and open shots for ourselves. And again, if we're going for the order of operations approach, we want to just drive and score that layup every time until help defense comes so hard to stop us that they leave our teammate wide open that's a shooter and we kick it out to him. So the basic circle movement is move the same direction as the hand the ball handler is dribbling with. That's the clearest way I've found to read that. It's not which direction they're really dribbling, because sometimes they'll change hands but still be going the same direction. They, it's not based on the defense. It's just based on your teammate with the ball. Which hand did they dribble with? And I talk about it like turn signals is my favorite analogy. Blinky, blinky, blink. We're all going this way. Or blinky, blinky, blink. We're all going that way. Watch the hand they dribble with. Tells you where to go. One of my favorite things to work on. And then we have some exceptions to the rule. So if you're next to the ball and they're driving middle, oftentimes it's best to reverse the circle and end up circling behind them instead of going away like we normally would. You circle behind, you actually have some protected space because they, by driving, trapped two defenders, yours and theirs, and you're actually wide open behind the play for them to dish it back to you or pitch it back, as we call underhand pass. Um, another one is a hammer pass. So if they drive baseline and you're opposite, far away from the ball, it's better for you to go, instead of they drive right and you move right up to the top of the key, they drive right and you move left to be in their line of sight down the baseline and find a pass. And you know, these are some of the basic pieces to get you started with. What we eventually want to evolve to is the ultimate goal of what I call creating a window, which just means you are always moving, which direction doesn't really matter. You know where your defender is, and all you want to do is not be putting that defender between you and the ball. You want to move to create a window of space where the passer can find you. And if you follow the basics of move right when they drive right, move left when they drive left, and then you get familiar with where some exceptions are actually helpful, you get pretty good at this very quickly. And you can always make yourself available as a shooter anytime your teammate drives. And you can find a lot of ways to get wide open shots with just doing that alone. So let's see what that looks like in a video demonstration here. Get to see coaches in action. Simple version first, driving right, moving right, catch and shoot in the corner. Simple as it sounds, you can get a lot of shots of this, but the defense knows it, so we need some counter moves because the defense catches on that this might be an obvious pass. Filling behind, same rule, just the opposite direction. He drove left, I move left, catch and shoot shot. Moving in the shape of a circle. Best way to remember this. And we'll get into some details of footwork as well as precision of how to move into the pass. A lot of different ways to get there. And footwork as we catch it and as we pass it is actually what makes this work really smoothly. Here's the same idea, other side of the floor. And this is one of our counter moves. Defense catches on that we are going to get stuck and pivot in the paint and have to kick it back out. And when the defense overplays the pass back out, we back cut on the other side of the rim. We end up with kind of a post player pass, which we'll talk about in the coming weeks as the playmaker. This is our hammer pass. We're driving right, and the shooter is moving to the left. We'll see this again in slow motion. You watch where I'm spacing to. I'm getting out of the corner initially. I could move either direction, and as he drives right, I'm moving further toward the baseline in his line of sight. So he drove right, I moved left to be more available. Uh, same thing happening here. A little less experienced player, but they are backpedaling into the corner. They're getting there just in time. This is the slot drive reverse circle that I talked about. I'm going to actually pause here and go back to this one. So driving left, normally this shooter would go left, but because the defense is getting sucked into the paint, 
the ball handler actually ends up acting as a screen. So defense is down in the paint, shooter circles up over top, and we get kind of a short distance pass. We'll work on some techniques to get that. But big advantage catch back there because we've got that protected bubble of space. And then seeing the back cut again here as a um, counter move to the overplay, taking away the pass because they know the ball is stuck. We're back cutting to the rim. Another kind of evolution of this is what we call hockey assists, what we're seeing here. It's just an extra pass. After we kick it out, defense knows it and they're covering it. We swing it, lateral pass outside the perimeter to the next open shooter. And this works really, really good. Here's a combination of both. We had the hammer pass available, filled toward the corner, and then we came back to find the ball. When it swung out, we got a hockey assist, second pass into shot. So lots of fun stuff here. As we start to combine these, it uh, gets more and more interesting and more and more fun. Let's jump over to triangle cutting next. We're talking about three destinations, the simplest way I've ever found to describe what is possible in the realm of cutting. There's only three things you can be cutting toward. One is the basket. There's going to be two different ways we can do that, cutting to basket. We can cut from the basket towards space, which my definition is both away from the basket and away from the ball to get maximal space. And then the third one is to cut toward the ball, what we'd call a ball cut, what's more commonly called a fill cut. We're filling space between us and the ball as we're running back toward the ball. And no matter what angle or space you're operating on on the court, thought about this a lot and there's only these three things that you can cut toward which greatly simplifies the whole idea of cutting a v cut that's very commonly talked about and maybe taught is a combination of partial back basket cut and then back out to space uh, a flash cut usually across the paint is running toward the ball it's a different kind of ball cut uh, so forth so we're going to get into both the strategy here and some of the technical details of how to be a better cutter and relate it back to what we talked about a lot in our ball handling week four, changing speed and changing direction at the same time. My pet peeve with cutters is that they go the same speed all the time and they might actually run more of a circle rather than a triangle and they never stop or change speed when they're changing direction. So. They run a big circle at a jog and their defender runs a little bit smaller circle and they end up back where they started and don't really gain anything by doing even a lot of cutting. And when teams have that problem, it's actually more of a over cutting where they're getting in each other's way. They're all cutting in big circles all at the same time because cutting and moving is what the coach is asking for. Everybody's moving, but they're all doing it without any sense of timing, without any change of speed. And again, when they change direction, there's no speed attached to it. And so it's very easy to guard and we actually end up putting ourselves in each other's way. So nobody's open when they're cutting. And also there's so many people cutting in the paint in our way, there's no chance to drive. So we're gonna try to simplify your life as a cutter and make you more effective. So starting with a face cut. We like to do a juke step away from our pass. So if we're passing the right here, juke step is faking left to get our defender out of the way a little bit. And then we're running on the ball side of our defender, what we call the face cut between their face and the ball. And the swim cut is simply a back cut. So instead of the face side of our defender, we're going behind them, but we're using a specific arm technique to actually swim through them, put them behind us. And we're running away from the ball here to get space on the other side of the rim. Second is our space cut, running away from basket, how to catch, turn, and be ready to shoot it as fast as possible. There's a lot of different ways to get there. Some are better than others. Um, step back is what we call us, specifically a 180 step back, running away from the basket, turning to face the basket, get balanced up, and be able to shoot out of that or be able to attack um, some other way. But getting balanced and ready to attack as soon as possible is the goal. Uh, and then thirdly is our fill cut or our ball cut. We're running toward the ball. And this one we call an inside pivot footwork technique. And we're trying to simply turn on the foot that's closest to the basket when we catch. So inside meaning closest to basket. We've worked 
on a little bit with relation to finishing. We're turning on our left foot here because it's the closest to the basket. We can get a lot better smooth turn to shoot and we are maximally efficient set up to drive. And the goal on the drive is to get to rim in one dribble. So we're going to be breaking down this a lot this week, getting comfortable with this catch on the run, whether we shoot it or drive it either side. Catching on the move, running toward the ball is one of the most frequent situations that you'll ever find yourself as a cutter. So being ready to attack is the top priority. So next we're going to talk about our dribble at. I have a quote up here from longtime mentor of mine, Noah LaRoche. It says, don't fight over plays. And we already, already saw a quick example of this in our uh, drive and kick when we're filling behind the drive. Often the defense will catch on that the ball handler's stuck and they're turning to look out toward the perimeter for a pass. And they're starting to overplay that pass because they can see it setting up. And we're back cutting them as a counter move. So the same rule applies here. I kind of think about it like a logic tree. If your defender is between you and the ball, denying you from getting a pass, they cannot also be between you and the basket, at least in a really solid defense position. They might be able to kind of cover half of both, which is what their strategy is going to be, but they're not a wall between you and the basket like they should be to stop you from cutting they are trying to hedge out and deny a pass. And so we're gonna just use that against them. If they're outside the three-point line and they're between us and the pass denying it, they're not between us and the basket. So we're going to simply cut to the basket. And that is another example of a back cut. We're not cutting on the face side of the defender between them and the ball. We're cutting on the back side of them. So their body's actually between us and the ball, but we're getting a step ahead of them based on their position and uh, trying to synchronize that cut with our ball handler so that he, as the ball handler passer teammate of ours, is in sync with us. Like he can see the same option setting up and therefore he's ready to throw a pass to us as we make that back cut. Uh, so really you could back cut at any time, but it's optimally efficient if you can get in sync with that ball handling teammate so that you are cutting only when he is prepared to dribble and pass to you. So the dribble at here is simply, instead of driving at the basket, we are turning and dribbling at our teammate's chest. So if you're that wing player teammate and I'm the ball handler, instead of attacking toward the paint, I'm going to turn my toes and my nose toward you and dribble straight to you. And that defender's instinct is going to be to go even farther out over the three-point line to make sure I'm not giving you the ball as a pass. And right when they move away from basket, you're cutting to the basket, making that back cut. And then option two is simply our counter move here is if they're able to deny a back cut, right? You're testing them out. We actually have a term for that. We call a two-step test. If your back cut is not open because they're actually doing a good job of covering you, then by covering that, you're able to come back around and take a handoff if I am your delivery man giving you the dribble at signal and then eventually the handoff. And just by setting that up that way, your defender is either out of position, you're getting a back cut, or they're covering the back cut and they're trailing behind you as you come to the handoff. Either way, you get an advantage. So again, this is defeating a really high pressure defense. We went through the four levels. You know, you can just drive and score, you could drive and kick. If they're covering your drive, but packing in the paint, then you could pass and cut. And now if they're locking you down with a one-on-one -on -one really good defender and they're denying our wing passes, they think they've got us locked up. We're going to use a dribble at to either get a back cut or a handoff and get some advantage action very quickly. And again, maintain control in the ball handler's hands so we don't have to wait for other actions to happen before we can attack. And then this brings us to the rule of opposites, which we're going to circle back to again in relation to screening and screens away from the ball specifically in a couple of weeks. But this is my best way to describe what we want to do after any two player exchange where we're like crossing paths here and a handoff. We want to go in opposite directions afterwards. So it's up to the ball handler. We want them, because they're receiving the ball into a dribble motion automatically, we want their first option to be attacking the rim. So if I'm 
dribbling to you and delivering it to you, you want to come through that handoff and be attacking the rim as hard as you can. And so if you go in to the rim, I'm going to pop out to the perimeter so that all the defense worried about your drive pulls them away from me and I get a lot of open shots. And then vice versa. If you get, maybe they switch or they even double team and trap you as the ball handler coming out of the handoff, they're pushing you out away from the basket. So I'm going to roll in just like I would on a normal ball screen play. And so we call it the rule of opposites. Wherever the ball goes or the cutter goes, we want the screener or the delivery man and the handoff here to go in the opposite space. So just in and out, if you take nothing else away from this whole week, this will help you in a lot of different basketball situations. So we call it the receiver and the delivery man. If the receiver goes in, delivery man goes out. The receiver goes out, delivery man goes in. And that's the simplest way to make a handoff maximally effective and really tear the defense in two different directions. So even if neither one of us is actually the one scoring, we're going to create a huge rift in the defense that another teammate may be able to exploit as the play unfolds. So let's see what this one looks like on film. Talking about the dribble at with a back cut first. So here we got denial defense. Back cut is going to the rim. Lots of technique to get to work through on the passes. We're going to see a few players trying this out. And notice the space where the pass is going. It is behind the defender's back. A lot of players want to keep going and wrap it around the defender. We're using the space behind their back to throw the pass. And then on the handoff, we've got a drive going into the paint just barely, but the delivery man spaced out to the corner, which is exactly what we want. Even with two defenders fully engaged, there is not a great way to stop both of those options. And uh, evolution of this is to open toward the ball. When you're the delivery man handing it to the receiver, if they're taking it out of your hands and driving it, you want to see them all the time. So when the drive goes here, instead of turning your back to the ball, we want to open and see the ball. Same directional cue we would use for a ball screen. We want to roll open, see the ball first as we're attacking the basket. Let's see this one more time. Handoff is a little unsecure here. We're flipping it in the air. I'd like to get two hand handoff ball security like we're handing off a football. So there's no chance for the ball to get deflected, dropped, bobbled in between. We are working for ball security. They're gonna take it out of our hands. And by doing so, we actually make ourselves a lot more effective screener in essence if we're the delivery man waiting for the ball handler and receiver to take it out of our hands means we are physically in the way of whoever's trying to guard them and that allows us to create that rule of opposites advantage because the defense has to figure out how they're going to get around that if they're going to switch if they're going to hedge if they're going to double team the ball handler and uh, simple as it sounds just having those two options like we're working on in a lot of different areas if you can back cut effectively and you can come take a handoff effectively, and then you know where your teammate's going to be. If they're popping out or they're rolling to rim, you can do a lot of damage with a two-player duo uh, with nothing else involved as a, a third action. So you'll hear me talk about, and we'll even ask you on a quiz, what are the three actions? It is drive and kick, pass and cut, dribble at with our back cut and our handoff counter move. And if you go through our whole 12 weeks here and take nothing else away, but getting good at these three actions, you're going to have a pretty successful basketball career. All right, quick summary, the order of operations, what comes first is important. When we're an individual player on a catch, we want to shoot first and drive second. If we're a ball handler individual, we want to drive first. And then if the defense backs off, we can pull up and shoot. When we're in a team scenario, we want to drive first, pass second, and dribble at third. And really don't need any other tools if we get good at those. Fast break options. If we have the ball, we're going to run, attack the middle of the floor but whenever possible. If we're ahead of the ball, we want to run sideline wide toward the corner, ideally, and angle into the rim only if there is an empty rim. There's no defense back to stop us, and the defense is actually stepping out to stop the ball. 
empty rim means rim run. Otherwise, we're staying wide and letting the ball operate down the middle. Half court options, circles, triangles, and dribble at. Circling drive means right hand drive, everybody moves right, creating space. Left hand drive, everybody moves left. A few exceptions to that rule we're going to get into on the court. You saw examples of on video part one. Uh, triangle cutting we just covered. Go to the basket, go to space, go back to the ball. Those are the three possibilities. Getting good at those, changing speed as you change direction with those, trying to be unpredictable as a cutter can be a huge asset to get you open for more shots. And then finally, dribbling at denials. We don't want to fight it if they're overplaying us. We don't want to get pushed out farther from the basket, catch it with our back to the basket. We want to back cut if they're denying and then use that as a move and counter move pair to come back to a handoff and eventually get good at that rule of opposites operating with a teammate in a handoff or a ball screen type scenario. So that's it for week seven. I'll see you on the court.